Gary, where do you think Deschutes is? What's your place in the craft brewing industry right now? Oh boy, that's an interesting uh, question in, in that we've been at this 31, 32 years. Uh, craft beer has grown to the point where everybody knows about it now. So, you know, I hope we are at a place where people still respect the amount of time and energy and effort that we put in to quality, to, that we put into innovation, that we put into making the beers that people love. And uh, for us, that's what drives us. How much does legacy matter versus what's new and trendy and cool? Well, I think legacy only matters as much as, uh, as the way that people respond to what we do. You know, how long we've been at it is really not as important as how well we do it. And for me, that's the most important thing. What are the biggest challenges uh, that you think you face right now? Well, the biggest challenges are we now have 7,500 competitors. Uh, the large brewers are fully engaged. Anheuser-Busch is purchasing craft breweries right and left and competing on, on our turf now. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very challenging environment to operate a craft brewery now. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about the definition of craft? Do you think it's appropriate now? And I mean, how how is the definition going to shift, and how does that benefit or hurt um, large breweries, large craft breweries, I should say? To me, the definition of craft brewery is valuable on a uh, uh, a, a political front. But from our standpoint, the only valuable definition is that which the consumer assigns to us. We, you know, we work our bloody tails off to uh, create beers that excite our customer. And at any time when they decide that's not what they want, you know, that's going to be the end of us. But for us, right now, that's the only thing that drives us, is our consumer. Mm -hmm. Ben, um, how does your job um, factor into, into staying relevant, you know, and, um, and the, the future of both the industry and Deschutes Brewery? I think when we think about new products that we're going to go for in the barrel age realm, it's we need to focus on what do people want, but also just staying true to what people expect out of Shoots Brewery, and that's quality, like in the process and the ingredients that we choose. Um, it's kind of what I think about when we when we talk about products we're going to go for. Um, yeah, we need to we need to make sure that we're staying as true to what we see as Deschutes Brewery and what people expect for Deschutes. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> so, how do, <laughs> I mean, uh, it, this is hard. It is hard. <laughs> how, how does the barrel aging program factor in when you're sort of moving towards um, more health health focused, uh, low calorie, sessionable beers. For me or Ben? Or? Start with you. All right. Uh, look, we want to be uh, participants in every segment of the beer consumer's experience, and uh, a barrel aging is one very high end. Uh, it, I think of it more as like a wine-like experience. Uh, very complex, higher in alcohol, lots of uh, opportunities for uh, discussion, introspection, etc. Uh, but the, the overall beer drinker is looking for something more casual, 
and we want to provide that as well. So whether it's something that's 100 calories, 4% alcohol, or you know a six and a half or seven percent alcohol IPA, we want to be there and we want to provide a beer that satisfies the the greatest expectation of that consumer as well. Mm-hmm. Does it factor in anything you're doing, Ben? Uh, yeah, I mean to me, craft beer has a lot of different forms, and yeah, kind of like Gary was saying, like. People want sessionable beer. Sometimes people want like a nuanced, higher ABV beer. And yeah, we're always going to be looking to provide that. It's mm-hmm. kind of keeps us mm-hmm. challenged. And yeah, I mean, when you talk about the shoots as a craft beverage company am i saying that right is that how you describe yourselves <laughs> yeah that's fair sure uh, i mean so how far outside of beer are we talking because yeah i mean seltzer is not brewing right well i don't know if, I, I i don't know that i characterize seltzer as not brewing but i can tell you that what Deschutes does Uh, We've made a whiskey for uh, a number of years now. We've made a a cider that we serve in our pubs for a number of years now. For at least that period of time, we've been outside the realm of beer. With uh, new products that we're introducing this year, uh, most like, uh, most definitely modified theory, it is a a, uh, product that definitely extends beyond beer and something that is uh, interesting to consume on its own. Uh, It's made like beer. Uh, It's something that can be consumed poured over ice. It's something that can be consumed mixed with your favorite spirit. And we think Modified Theory is something that uh, a consumer who is beyond beer uh, could really uh, enjoy in a number of different consumption uh, uh, times. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, how much is the business now chasing the trends, and how do you how do you stay ahead of them? You know. Well, I don't think we're chasing the trends at all with modified theory. Quite uh, uh, frankly, I think we're. Uh, this is, if the trends are going towards seltzers, we're going in a completely different direction. So what makes that your uh, seltzer unique? Well, it's not a seltzer, first of all. Well, yeah, how, do you, how, would you, how would you define it? I mean, what well, makes it different than seltzer? Honestly, because uh, it's something that is a uh, higher flavor profile than seltzers, it's a little bit higher alcohol content, than seltzers, it's a little bit, it's all natural ingredients, it's made basically uh, the same uh, way as, as a beer is made, not that necessarily different than a seltzer, but uh, you know, it, it's something that you can drink out of the can, it's something you can pour over ice, it's something you can mix with your favorite spirit, and I think that's something that's completely different than what's available in the market today. So will we see the Modified Theory brand um, on tap at Deschutes um, Portland and Ben Pubs? Uh, yes, you will see the Modified Theory brand on tap at both the Portland and Ben Pubs. Um, one of the new models that a lot of... Um, smaller and upper up and coming breweries are doing is having more tap rooms um strategically regionally placed um you guys already operate obviously a very successful bend location actually kind of two band locations and the portland pub um seems like it's always done really well i mean have you thought about or are looking to open one anywhere else uh right now we don't have any plans to open another pub in any of our uh, territories where we operate. 
Why not? Well, right now, we're, our, our focus is on developing these new brands, on making sure that our consumer gets the, the best to Shrewsbury experience that they can. And uh, we continue to talk about opening new pubs, but at this point in time, we don't have any plans. Um, just to pivot a little bit, um, Ben, are, are there anything, any beers or um, innovations or th things that you want to explore more on the barrel age side of things? Uh, we just got a cool ship last year, so we're super mm. interested in doing trials on just figuring out the local microflora in our environment, and uh, yeah. Where will that cool ship uh, be placed to best uh, be um, spontaneously inoculated? We put it on casters, so we want to try to explore everything in the area. So, um, you know, we talked about maybe local orchards where we're getting some of our fruit, or not necessarily limiting to one spot on the premises, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, being in the desert, I feel like we're a little challenged with location, so let's make mm -hmm. sure that we give ourselves as many locations as we can to figure out what works for us. Will you try to isolate any yeast or bacteria from that, or just let it um, let it be whatever you know makes its way into the cool ship? I I would like to know. Um, I feel like at the end of the day, what makes the best beer is going to be what drives our process. But uh, no, I definitely would like to figure out what they are. And, mm -hmm. um, it would be fun to bank them and, and play with them a little bit and understand like what they're going to give you in different situations. Mm -hmm. um, Gary, what do you think is the biggest challenge um, for Deschutes as a brewery going forward? Well, I think the biggest challenge for us is to continue to create beers that our consumers get excited about. I think that's the... You know, that's where we've always been, and that's where we continue to be today. And is, do you think health conscious beer is um, is going to be a uh, a lasting trend in the industry? Well, the whole better for you category in beer, as well as beverages in general, I don't see how it's going to go away. I think that the the trend of people wanting to lead healthier lifestyles is going to continue to be something we're going to be involved in for the foreseeable future. Mm 